Hi, I'm Vi Wickham, and this is a free fiddle lesson for MyTalentForge.com. It's a song that's one of my favorites uh, to play. Uh, it was also one of my grandma's favorite tunes, and I used to play it for her when she was in the nursing home. Um, this lesson will be uh, pretty straightforward. Um, I'll also be doing a harmony lesson on Ashoka Farewell also. Uh, this tune was written by Jay Unger, who's a great fiddler who lives uh, in upstate New York and has a place called the Ashokan Center. Uh, he's a really nice guy, tremendously talented. Um, and this is his most famous tune. It's called Ashokan Farewell. I'm going to play it for you first, then we'll break down uh, some of the intricacies. So that's your basic melody. Uh, it's a beautiful tune. Um, I'll just kind of break it down a little bit for you. This is this is a beautiful waltz tempo. So it's in three four. It's in the key of D, um, <clears throat> and it's uh, it's kind of a lament as far as the feeling. So it should feel sad. Uh, you know, it's a reflection. Uh, you should be expressing. You know, a little bit of sadness in this tune. So think about something sad as you play it and try and express that communication of that sad feeling while you play it. So we start out on the A string. O, two, three. Back down. So that first phrase. And that's kind of the rhythmic pattern. Do va do ba do va do. And then that rhythmic pattern pre repeats do va do ba do va do do. So that's a kind of a common trend in, in waltzes is that you'll have a rhythmic phrase that you play and then you repeat that rhythmic phrase with with different notes. It might be you know, over a different chord, or it might be down on a different string. Um, but uh, we have... Then... So there's our first two phrases. One, two, three, two, one, two. down bow. So there's a D arpeggio. Ending on the F sharp. So that's that's kind of our our first segment. So I'll play that together. So that ending 
is our first ending, and you can tell we ended on an E note, which ending a phrase on an E note when we're in the key of D means that note is from an A chord. So A is the five chord of D. That note, that E note, tells us this is an A chord. A chord is the five chord, which tells us this is not resolved. So we need to go back and repeat that A phrase. And then here's where we resolve it with our second ending. So we had da 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 dum as our first and then first ending, and then the second ending is so you can hear we end on a D note, which gives us very good resolution. Makes us feel like, ah, this is good. This section is good and done. So we move on to the B part of the song. So there was an A part with the first ending and then an A part with the second ending. Um, I'll put the A part together so you'll hear A1 and then A2, and then we'll play the B part. in there. I added a little bit of flourishes. So um, you're welcome to take any of those little additions that I did that time and incorporate it into your version or to work out your own. So the first time I played that through, I played it pretty straight so that you can learn the melody. Then the next time you play it, you can add a little bit of your own personality to it. Um, being as this is a slow, pretty song, we want to make sure that our bowing is really smooth throughout the whole bow stroke. Um, I don't want to do... Because that sounds like I'm killing it. I want to... Let some emotion out, let some expression, add some dynamics, keep your bowing smooth. So smooth bowing, it'll also help if you tilt your bow a little bit so we're touching with less hair. So if you tilt your bow forward so that the hair is pointed towards the bridge and the stick is a little more towards the fingerboard, that'll give you less surface area of a violin bow hair touching the string and will make things a little softer for the amount of pressure you add with your right hand. So now we're on to the B part. So you'll notice that is the same rhythm as just just another pattern to keep in mind as you learn it. So that's our first phrase. Second phrase. So that has like a little bit of a scotch snap in there. It's a reverse swing. So I'll put those two uh, pieces together. And now for the third phrase of the B part. 
So you'll notice that just like in the A part, we had a repeating rhythmic pattern. In the B part, we also have a repeating rhythmic pattern that you'll feel So now we're on to the, the next uh, phrase of the B part. So that's really important. Um, then we're going D arpeggio again. And if we normally would, we'd think it was going to be a D7 chord, but Jay wrote a really clever uh, chord change here, so we so it goes to a C chord, which isn't a normal chord to go to when we're in the key of D. It's a flat seven of the key of D, or it's the four chord of the four chord. Um, it's the four chord of, of G, which is the four chord of D. You know, getting a little theoretical here, but it's a really cool effect to do when we've we've been keeping kind of close to the key of D. We have Scotch snap again the So we can end it any number of ways, but uh, uh, as we're looking at it, we got. So we have that same D arpeggio. And we can keep going. Or, and that's it. That's the song. Uh, it's really important with it being such a beautiful, expressive song that when you play it, that you add some of your own emotion to it. And remember the rule of rubato. What you take, you must give back. So if we stretch out a phrase here, the next phrase may have to be a little tighter so we stay within the rhythmic structure of what our guitarist or mandolin player or other accompanist is playing because it's got to keep rolling rhythmically. So here it is again, a Shokan farewell. Thank you so much for uh, being here for this lesson. If you've enjoyed it, I hope you come to MyTalentForge.com to enjoy uh, and visit and learn. Uh, we've got a whole lot more lessons for you there. This is a Shokan farewell. Here we go.
Thanks a lot. I'll see you next time.